This is Amateur Faith Night, a podcast where real life friends talk about real life religion, where questions are encouraged, doubt is talked about, and following Jesus is our main priority. Let this be a starting place for you to research things and study them out for yourself. God is bigger than all of our questions, and it is okay to not have all of the answers. Three, two, one, <laughs> action. Hey, everybody. It is, I don't know, is it the first? Are you trying to like say what day it's going to be when this comes out? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know. It's the first or the 15th, something like that. It's uh, the second to our last podcast video before our summer hiatus, right? I thought this was our last. Oh. Okay. This I don't know. But we are going to take a summer hiatus because we we're are, um, I know <laughs> we actually were, <laughs> but I guess we hadn't had the discussion about, um, what exactly we were going to do in the future. Anyways, um, we are going to take the summer off though, because we do have a lot of stuff going on with just our families and, um, the conference is coming up. So I've been planning for that and involved in that kind of stuff. So, um, we are going to take a little bit of break with the podcast, um, but we will come back probably when school starts or so. So that being said, um, I think you were, I don't know, we were kicking around an idea to, um, go through one of David Bernard's newest videos that just came out recently about legalism and his thoughts about what the meaning of legalism is and why the UPC doesn't fall under that category. Um, obviously we disagree and we kind of thought, um, it might be kind of fun slash educational to go through that and kind of break it down. Break it down. Um, that all being said, don't count on it. Like <laughs> we, it's in the it's in the thought process, and it may or may not happen. Um, it will happen. It just will it happen before summer. Well, right, yeah, that's true. Um, so also, Gary is with his kids because they had stuff going on. So my kid is in. Um, Hello. Jocelyn had nothing to do tonight but oh, hang out with her parents. No, nothing so. else to do. <laughs> so she's very excited. Um, college is out? College is out. I'm going to be going back to camp this summer. So Crystal Lake? What's that from? Friday the 13th? Yes. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I yeah. didn't catch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, you make it sound like you're just going there for like a week. Oh, no. I work there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 20. I'm not going to camp. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. I think my exact words for tonight were, oh, I like the gospel, trying to hint that. She wanted to join us. I kind of did. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's know. not true. She thought we were finger painting. <laughs> well, we, you just announced what we were talking about, though. Oh, sorry. I don't think we had gotten that far yet. I think you did. No, we hadn't. But thank you. I'm sorry. We're talking about the gospel. The gospel. And what about the gospel? <laughs> well, let's do this. Too. Jocelyn, since you're educated and you're going to college for a uh, ministry degree, how would we say the gospel or good news in Greek? <laughs> she actually took a year of Greek. I took a year of Greek. <laughs> Come on. Of Koine Greek. <clears throat> Ecclesia is church. That's the first word that came. That's like. That's all you know. That's like a. That's it, the first word that came. Isn't, to it, mind. So, isn't it something like. Uh, it's EU something something. I don't know. E- e- EU Jalon or something? Yes. Yes. Eugelion. Eugelion. <laughs> Very good. It, it started with an epsilon. I had that in mind. Education well spent right there. I got a B. <laughs> See? And I have easy. a second year, so it's all going to pay off. Hopefully. Wait, you, this was your second year of Greek and you this didn't know the my, good news? No, this is my first year <laughs> oh, of first Greek. Year of Greek. And school's been out for like a month. 
<laughs> Anyways. So um, that all being said, the reason why we did want to talk about the gospel is because I know when Jeremy and I were UPC, we talk about this a lot. I know I've said it in several podcasts and interviews that I did not know what the gospel meant. I didn't know what the word meant. Um, I had really no, I guess I never really get into any thought. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess if somebody were to ask me like what the gospel was, I would go back to Acts 238 because I thought that's what the gospel was, Acts 238. Um, I mean, and and the UPC has, you know, their, their logo is the whole gospel to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would have said the whole gospel is the book of Acts chapter two. Um, after we had started studying, it just kind of dawned on me um, the more verses that I was finding that was that were debunking that three step salvation. I uh, kind of had to go back to square one and just be like, okay, let's back up. What is the gospel? Like elementary gospel? What is it? And um, I was actually shocked because I didn't have any idea that the word gospel in Greek actually means good the good news. The good, good news. And so without getting into all of that just yet, um, that wasn't what I thought it was at all. I had no idea. Yeah. And that sounds really stupid, but like literally I had no idea. We did reach out to some friends, some ex UPCers, and I promised I would not name names. But the question was, what did you think the gospel was while you were in the UPC? And what did you think it was after the fact? And several of the answers were very, very similar to Jennifer's in the fact that, um, yeah, a lot of people thought it was Acts 2.38. And of course, since that time period, um, you know, their views have definitely changed more to probably Paul's definition of the gospel in the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, most of them just assumed because that's what they hear taught from the pulpit every week that the gospel wasn't necessarily the good news of Jesus, but was a plan of salvation. Right. Which is not the correct plan of salvation. Also right. Yeah. And somebody did say they thought it was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, but it was Mm -hmm. um, going back to John 3. Right, right. right. Correlating with John 3 and Acts 2.38, because... not to get into like this whole topic because that's a whole other podcast, but um, the death, burial, and resurrection, meaning repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and being filled with the Holy Ghost and the fact where you speak in tongues. And it sounds weird to say Holy Ghost to me because I don't say it like that anymore. Don't say Holy Ghost anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, but I would never ever have said Holy Spirit before. That was I wrong. didn't even know that people said like I knew, but I thought it was just like a Catholic thing. <laughs> Okay. So this person, what they had said and replied actually stood out to me because I felt very similar in a certain statement here. And they replied, I think my understanding of it evolved over time. I knew it meant good news for as long as I can remember. And the good news always had to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But for most of my life, that basically ended up meaning that he gave me another chance to get things right every time I repented. Mm -hmm. He hadn't fully accomplished my salvation, just took my punishment of death for me so that I was indebted to him even more. At some point, I also learned that it was related to a new king taking authority over a kingdom. So that is... I don't know if I've heard that, like a new king taking over a kingdom. I don't know what that would mean. I'm not sure what they meant by that, but the the whole idea that he hadn't fully accomplished my salvation... Is definitely it means that you're in a works based right. salvational program. And you're also, if that's the case, just like Galatians, Jesus died for really no reason. And Galatians 2 21. Yep, yep. Because we know that we can't be good enough on our own to earn our salvation. Um, and really, that's not the good news. That's like maybe better news, but not good news. Right. I mean, that means you have a way out, but you have to be good enough to get it. Yeah. Even even once you've been delivered, we'll say, you, you still have to earn it. And right. Well, it's kind of like I've heard people say, um, like a lot of people who are legalists would 
like look, people looking in, I guess, on that mm-hmm. would say, yeah, well, they believe that Christ is strong enough and powerful enough to save you, but not strong enough to keep you. Right. And I think that's, you know, I, I think it always breaks down to this. Like, if you don't trust Christ fully and you are arrogant enough to believe that there's something that you can add to that sacrifice, that's where the gospel gets skewed. Yeah, it's a weak gospel. Right. And it would not be, like you said, it would not be good news. No, it's not good news. It's maybe better news than their predicament before. What what do you think, Joss? That's just so damaging to think that it's just our, us constantly having to essentially prove ourselves to be worthy of salvation, if that makes sense. Um, I think about like in the Old Testament where Israel kept falling away, but God kept coming back. And that's such a beautiful, just. (laughs) Kind of like Jose and Gomer. Yeah. And like, it's, you know, the whole Bible is the whole story of Jesus. And it's just so beautiful to know that we don't have to, you know, live by the law anymore. So why would we want, want to when Christ is enough? Well, that goes to a lot of different reasons, which if we do get to that video, um, about David Bernard's, Dr. David Bernard's, um, view on legalism, I think that has a lot to do with it. And I think it boils down to pride. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's prideful because as humans, we don't want to think that we're not enough. We don't want to think that we can't fix something. We want to believe that, you know, it's all about us, but it's. Do you think it's pride from like the everyday person that's involved in holiness or is it like the higher ups that press that on people? I think it's evolved over time, but I think that, that you carry that burden because that's what you're taught. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what those ministers were taught. You right. know, it's like, it's just that cycle keeps repeating. It is, it is, don't... it is human pride, but it's a, for some, it may be natural because some people are just more prideful than others, just right. their attitude and their outlook on life. But I think for a lot of people in the org, um, that it's, it's a learned pride because that's what their, their leaders do. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like an inherited yeah, like sin, you know, the Ooh, apostolic, like the original sin, it mm-hmm. comes through the bloodline. That's not where my mind went, but I'm, I'm glad to know that that's where your mind went. Thank you for sharing. So, why is the correct definition of the gospel important? Well, I think the gospel, when you break it down. It's really the story of our triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and their work and what they did through and in Jesus Christ and how it affects us in our everyday life. And when it boils down, the question is, why are we here? And that's to you know, follow God for His glory and be able to commune with Him. And God in all His wisdom through the ages knew that there had to be a plan of salvation and there had to be the good news to bring it about. That was a really long answer for what I was actually going for, but that makes sense. Well, what were you going for? Galatians 1, 8. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us a little I bit about Galatians 1, 8. I saw, I saw that in the notes. <laughs> I saw that. I, knew um, what was going on. I don't normally make notes. Actually. I was pretty proud of myself that I mm. made like, hold on, hold on. One, two, <laughs> three, like four, five machine. bullet points. We need like a sound, sound machine. machine. Yeah, where I can do like organ noises like and stuff. Like a keyboard? Yeah, you know? that'd be awesome. I know someone who could hook us up with that. We ought to get one. <laughs> that'd be so funny. <laughs> uh, anyways, no, I was going with that because Paul was very adamant about people not messing up the actual gospel. He said that if you teach any other gospel than what he gave to the Galatians, the church at Galatia, they're going to... They're going to be a curse, even if it's an angel from heaven. Mm-hmm. He's saying, if you teach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Right. And pretty serious. That Yeah, that is very serious. And honestly, like 
it's kind of scary when you think about it because I don't want to be the person that skews that. Right. I don't want that on me. Um, I do have a question. Why? Didn't Joseph Smith say that an angel came down? He did. Was it Moroni? Yeah. I don't remember it the was. name of the... Yeah. Yeah. You've watched a lot of Mormon documentaries. We watch a lot of cult documentaries lot in of, general. A lot of cult documentaries. <laughs> I, I was actually about mm, nine, I think, the first time I went to the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City. You've to been, tour you've it? You've been to the Mormon temple? Twice. Well, that's where General Conference was. The, the big one. The- <laughs> in the Mormon temple? No, it was in Salt Lake City, but they... I'm sure just visited. Yeah, we visited. Like, I don't think they actually let us in the temple, but we got to tour the grounds. If I remember right, we got to see where, like, the Mormon choir sings and stuff. Mormon tabernacle. And, like, you know, there was a lot of UPCers there. Like, I remember asking questions. My father was one of them, and he did not let up. Oh, how (laughs) embarrassing. Okay. (laughs) Uh, So, back to my um, notes. That I, that I have. I'm so proud of you. I know. Um, but seriously, that Galatians 1.8 is kind of a very ominous verse, you know, like how easy was it for us to believe for practically lifetime a different gospel? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's easy to fall into. I know somebody asked in a group the other day, like, why people fall into cults in general, just cults. And um, I think a lot of it is because people are good. They're good people and they want to do right. Right. And they want to, you know, be right before God and be a good Christian, but they don't know how, or they were taught something other than what the authentic gospel actually is. So I think um, education is important, which is kind of why we're doing this. So um, I also didn't realize that Jesus talked about the gospel. So where were you going? I was going to go with 1 too? Corinthians 15. Where are you going? Oh, Mark 1, 15. We'll break it down. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Hammer time. We should have had Jocelyn be prepared for this. Like we usually make Gary read the verses. <laughs> right. I, this was like a 20 minutes ago thought. Um, All right. Mark chapter one. Now, after John was imprisoned, Jesus went into Galilee and proclaimed the gospel of God. He said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the gospel. Well, Jesus's gospel was pretty direct to the point and not a whole lot of requirements. Right. (laughs) Right. It's not three step. Right. I mean, that's all he said. Repent and believe. The gospel of God. The gospel. So the gospel of himself, because he is God. Right. Right. Okay. And I think Paul goes into that too in Corinthians. Yep. The actual breakdown of the gospel is. Break it down. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. This is the ESV for all you KJV lovers. For I delivered to you. Let's be real. Those people don't watch our channel. (laughs) They may. (laughs) King Jimmy lovers. They may. Mm. King Jimmy. Jimmy. Well, for those that do love the King James, you need to add the Apocrypha because originally that was in there. So if you really believe that that's what you need to do, you need to add those extra books. That's such a random soapbox. (laughs) Well. That's such like. Like the, a pet, that's the KJ, not something to die on right now. The KJV people are the same people who think the earth is flat. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. Be, be careful. You might fall off the edge. All right. So 1 Corinthians 15 says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, And then he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, meaning Paul. Yeah. I mean, that's, again... Birth, crucifixion, which is also the death, the resurrection... Mm-hmm. That's the good news of Jesus. But how how does that apply to us? How does that apply to us? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? 
Like, why is that good news for us? Oh, well, good news is because Christ took our sins and buried them on the cross. He took that burden off of us. Um, like in Galatians 2, 22. Mm-hmm. Is that what the verse is? 22? Um, I had a thought. Um, you know, I wasn't that old when we left the UPC, so I don't want to, like, speak out of turn. But I really don't remember the epistles or the letters or even Paul really getting mentioned at all growing up. Like, I thought that the big guy was, like, Peter, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like Paul, who's that guy? He's not in the Bible. I don't know who that is. Paul, he's not in the <laughs> he's Bible. He's not in the Bible. <laughs> Uh, but, um, so like even that verse would have been so foreign when you could have asked someone, you know? Well, I mean, in your parents' defense, you did Bible quiz. I, I did. <laughs> and but they I took think out one of the scriptures epistles, that didn't get. Well, I think one of the years was the epistles, right? Didn't, or was that just mine? I don't think I ever did that. Oh, okay. I don't think if I did. I don't remember, but I do know that the EPC does take out verses that sometimes don't necessarily go with their agenda for Bible quizzing. Yes, they do. That's true. That's another soapbox. Yeah, but I mean, I think they do that more so with the juniors than the seniors because they take they have to take out more. Right. But yeah, they are very picky and choosy. Yes. Which ones they get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also was reading in Romans chapter one, too, because again, Paul, he said the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who is descendant of David with reference to the flesh, who was appointed the son of God in power, according to the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, we have received grace in our apostleship to bring about obedience of faith among all the Gentiles on behalf of his name. And that's a long roundabout way to say Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament's prophecy about how salvation was going to be achieved to the entire world. It was in Christ. And then in verse 16, obviously, that's the... They, they did quote this a lot in the UPC. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Of the gospel. For it is God's power mm-hmm. for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. I do remember learning that one in Bible quizzing. For the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. From faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Again, I don't see anything in there about three-step salvation. Well, let, let's, and this could be several episodes in its, itself, but let's be honest. Let's be open here. The plan of salvation from the Old Testament to the New Testament, today's the believers, has not changed. Mm-mm. Right. Paul lets us know that Abraham was saved by his faith in Christ. Now, he may not have known it was going to be Jesus Christ, but in the Christ, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. And so... That was counted him to righteousness. The same thing for us today. The plan of salvation has not changed. Mm-hmm. And for those that are like, will they sacrifice goats and lambs and it push their sins ahead? Well, that that's was just, because they hadn't found the perfect sacrifice yet. Right. That was just symbolic of the fact that they couldn't live a perfect life. Right. And something, something had to pay a par- price. Something had to suffer because of their mistakes. Yep. Yeah. It, is, it just all goes back to grace. Mm-hmm. Every time, every single answer, every single biblical story and, you know, biblical question, it goes back to grace. And it, yeah. it the gospel just, it boils down to grace. And I did hear David Bernard in his um, argument about why the UPC is not, in fact, legalistic, um, talking about how a lot of people th- are say like baptism and being filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues or works. And I kind of 
follow his train of thought in the way that, okay, you don't have to see them as works as long as they're like obedience is where he's going with it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you believe that baptism, the act, the physical act of baptism is what washes your sins away. Not the blood of Christ, the physical act of baptism. Right. You're, you're leaving out Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you could say the baptistry in the water is symbolic of the blood, but still you're, you're doing an act yourself to invoke God to do something, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, (laughs) I, I thought this too, as we were leaving, but then I was, I'm listening to him the other day when we were listening to that YouTube video, I just kept thinking like, which this is a whole other topic of baptism in general, but what's the point of repenting if your sins don't actually get wiped clean? When you say you're sorry, what what's the whole reason of baptism? Well, a U- I mean, repentance, not baptism, but, but repentance. Well, a UPCer would tell you you need to repent to gain forgiveness. However, the sins are still there. You're forgiven, but the sins are still there. You're still, we'll say, blotted. And so then the act of baptism washes away those sins. They would say remitted, even though when we look at the Greek in the New Testament. Same word. Same word. As forgiven. Forgiven, remitted. Those are the same words. So that's what they would explain to you. And if you believe that, then you believe in baptismal regeneration. Well, right. And, and you're, again, putting your trust in something that you're doing. And also, if your sins aren't actually forgiven until you are baptized a certain way, like, what's the point of saying you're sorry to begin with? And what happens, like, after the fact? So, like, do you have to get rebaptized? I think about... I saw this the other day, but it was like, how does the thief on the cross fit into your theology or something like that? I saw that article too. And I, like, it kind of sounds cheap, like the tagline's kind of cheesy, but if you really take a moment to think about that, like, you know, he was literally on his last breath and believed in Jesus. And Jesus said he would be with him in paradise and all he did was believe. Right. He didn't get baptized. Which, well, just just he like didn't the speak in tongues. Like it would be interesting to know, and I don't know if you could ever figure this out, or if somebody did, and I'm just stupid, and I don't know if the thief died before or after Jesus died. What's because, your what's your because I've thought? because I've heard the argument for that. He's only in one of the gospels, and I'm pretty sure it's right. Luke. But I've heard the argument for that, that Jesus hadn't died and Jesus was on the earth and he could do whatever he wanted. That was the argument that I heard. It's a very lame argument, I feel like. It's a very lazy argument. Um, But if that is in fact the case, if Jesus hadn't yet died, okay. But if Jesus had already died before that thief died and his soul went to heaven, then that just proves right there that faith is all you need. Right. (laughs) Well, I mean, we, we already discussed that. Paul tells us that's why Abraham was saved. Well, I know that, but people point to the thief on the cross and I've heard UPC people debunk that. So I, because I, well, I would believe Christ died before the thief. The reason why is because they would generally go and break their legs right. so that they would suffocate. They didn't have to break the legs of Jesus because he had already died. So if that indeed is the case, If Jesus died before the thief and the thief, I mean, if Jesus's words were true and he didn't lie, then the thief went to paradise. So. I don't know. It doesn't say. They'll they'll also argue then that he was still under Old Testament law because the Holy Ghost hadn't been fully outpoured in Acts 2 yet. Wasn't. But the veil was rent. The veil was rent, yes. So that's I, that's going to be under the new covenant. I I understand and I agree, but that would be someone's argument. <laughs> okay. My my next point was going to be the veil was already torn. 
These are actually yeah. the discussions that we have in our house this on a is daily. On the daily. Um, I had a friend come over really the other day. That's really weird that we said that at the same time, anyways. But I had a friend that came over the other day, and we even sat there and talked to her about theology. And she's like, "Yeah, my family does this too." And I was like, "Oh." So my <laughs> question is, oh, gosh, what about the zombies that rose up out of the grave that day? That's such a good question. Did, did they have to like then put their faith in Jesus because they're alive again? They were already dead. They said they rose from the grave. They were walking around alive. Which gospel is that from? Which one is that in? I don't know. I feel like it's Their bodies were reanimated. They died a second death. Which, that's a whole Josh Gates episode right there. That'd be pretty cool to investigate that. (laughs) If you don't know who Josh Gates is, I'm really sorry. You should Google it. Um, He is like the real Indiana Jones. Which which gospel is that in? That's going to bother me. I don't know. While you're looking, though, I want to read Luke 24. Luke 24, um, 45 through 49, the four, um, most of this is red letter. So this is Jesus talking, um, kind of goes along with Paul's writings in first Corinthians. We read a while ago, but it says, then he opened their minds, meaning Jesus to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus is, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer. And on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnessing of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So, if it had, if the good news was a three-step salvational plan, don't you think he'd include them in then? Right, he wouldn't have left it out. That's really right. And, important I mean, information. And yeah, this right. is Jesus talking, the head cheese. Right. Well, <laughs> and then, you know, we go back to Acts 16 and 31, where the jailer asks them, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved in your household. Right. Period. The end. That's all they said. If there was more, why wouldn't they have told him that? Why would they have left out information? So I guess the whole point of this is if you don't know the foundation, the foundation of the gospel, like the elementary version of what the gospel actually is, then your whole theology is like a stick house. It's just going to fall. It, yeah. It, it, I mean, there's no foundation there. I, I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. We sin each and every day. We can't be good enough. He lived a perfect life that we can never live. The father put our sins upon him on the cross He felt not only the pain and agony, but I'm sure a lot of shame because I've thought about the fact like he had everyone, everyone's sins and the whole world for all of eternity all upon him at one time because he died for everyone. Now, not everyone accepts him, but he felt, I'm sure, that shame. And then he said, it is finished. I mean, it's done. It's paid. Right. And the Bible does say to not live in condemnation. Yeah. For those who are in Christ Jesus. So those that aren't, you should. I also think that the gospel is just simple and it's plain. You know, dad said it was simple, but you don't have to scrape together fragments of different verses Mm -hmm. to say, this is what the gospel is. This is the nuance that actually means this. Yeah. You know, like, like in Acts chapters, like G- sixteen, it's yeah. just it's it's, it's very simple. plain. It's plain, and you, this way, you know, like I always thought before, everything in the Bible was like in code, you know, like right. you had to be like, <laughs> like figure Dan out Brown. what exactly this means, and you know, there are verses like that, like in Isaiah or you know the Book of Revelation. Don't even get me started on that. Um, Paul be tripping or no John be tripping John, like I, I I have questions you about that whole seven years book and why tribulation. why anyway um I would probably get that, stoned if I actually that book was almost not included thought. I know as canon right and it makes me question the validity of it 
Oh, did we just say that? I know. I that's why I was trying not to say it out loud. Actually. Now we need like a lightning strike sound. <laughs> <laughs> huh. But I mean, seriously, he was probably high. He was old. He was on the Isle of Patmos. Ugh. Yeah, he's he, eating mushrooms. You don't know what was in that stuff. I don't Drinking bad be water. Stoned with you. I I don't have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you mean physically stoned right i was like, like mm. yeah this oh well <laughs> it doesn't work that way either say it like that jocelyn doesn't want to get in trouble i mean it is legal here in missouri again not what we we're talking about but oh goodness i don't do that <laughs> i don't do that never have never will anyway I um, will spare you my thoughts on the book of Revelation oh, past that. But anyways, I always thought it was like some big code that unless you had the revelation of Jesus, you don't get, you don't understand. Like if you weren't Jesus only and you didn't have the UPC revelation, then like you were just doomed for hell for all eternity because you're not smart enough to put X, Y, Z together and fit all these verses. It's like a puzzle, you know, when you're like, like, <laughs> it kind of so, felt like a big secret that everyone else like did understood and that you were like, just, I think I understand. I think I get it. It reminds me. So my grandparents, God love them. They <laughs> put together this amazing puzzle for me like years ago. And I had just never gotten around because like our basement wasn't finished because we have a ranch. And so our basement was unfinished for a really long time. And we finally made like a really cool game room and everything down there. And I wanted to hang this like I wanted to frame the puzzle and hang it in the game room. And I got it out. It's hanging now. It is hanging now. But I got it out and it was missing pieces. And so I was super sad, you know, because my grandma has passed and my grandpa is too old to do puzzles anymore. So, um, I mean, and it's pro- they they probably did that, what, 15, 20 years ago? Very, very like, it, time. Probably 20 years we ago. Um, About the time we built the house. Yeah. And I it was very sad because, like, some of the pieces were missing. So my kids, for Mother's Day or my birthday Christmas. or something, Christmas, they scoured the Internet and found the same exact puzzle. And so we were going to replace the pieces that were missing, which was a great idea, except for the fact that the new puzzle. This is a kicker. Yeah. The new puzzle was cut with a different. Die. Yeah. Different. Same picture. Same same picture, picture, but different pieces. Yeah. And so we. We had to cut the pieces. I had to cut the pieces in some places. And in some places I overlaid the pieces on top of the puzzle inside the frame. So you can't really tell unless you're on it that yeah, it looks look through. It looks a little ahead. 3d in some places, <laughs> but cause I wanted to hang it, but it was like trying to get those puzzle pieces that didn't exactly fit. Like they were there, but they weren't exactly right. That's a good analogy to fit together. And that's how I felt when I was UPC. Like you had all of this information here and all this information here and all this information here. We're trying to jam it all together to make it work and make it fit, but it doesn't quite add up and it doesn't quite work. Well, it's kind of like, um, we like Acts two, but how do we make Acts two fit with John three? And then if we somehow figure out a way to make Mm -hmm. it fit with John three, well, then how do we make that fit with a triune Godhead? Oh, wait, we can't. So now we got to do a one. John 10 30. Oh, yeah. So then how do we get this, that then to fit with, you know, X, Y, Z. And like you said, it's big, but your analogy was better than mine. Mine was like old school, you know, like for those that remember TV in the eighties, reading rainbow where they jump in the book. <laughs> so my, my idea was like, you're jumping in a book. And the book's the Bible, but the Bible's a big escape room. And if you don't escape, you're doomed to hell. So you got to figure out all the mysteries in the book to get out. It's like that one Macaulay Culkin movie. Page Master? Yes! i never seen it. Oh. I was scared of that movie in the first grade. I am shocked. You were scared of every movie. Jocelyn would not watch Chronicles of Narnia until she was like 15 years old. It was sad because those are great (laughs) books. Do not put that on the internet. (laughs) I was scared of the page master. I remember crying to my teacher. 
We couldn't we watch Chronicles of Narnia because she was scared. We couldn't watch Lord of the Rings because she was scared. We couldn't I watch. I think part of the problem was that then you would pretend to be Gollum outside my bedroom while I was trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the fact that it was Which the was movie. really funny because like her five-year-old brother, Gollum, was like his favorite character. He thought that was the best. <laughs> <We> could- <laughs> I mean, he crawled down the aisle at church yes, pretending he did. to be Gollum. It was so embarrassing and I... We could read the books like during family story time and that was okay, but... To watch the movies, no. I don't. I also had an obsession with like the Ghost Hunters show, so it really didn't compute. I think I was just scared of like the fake stuff. Yeah, because yeah, we watched a lot of like Josh Gates and Ghost Hunters and like the paranormal I had a Ghost and book crazy stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyways, we went off so the rails. We have like the completely shark. off the rails, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I um. I hope that kind of broke it down, though, a little bit, because it it doesn't have to be so hard. Oh, my gosh. Why? (laughs) It doesn't have to be so hard. It doesn't have to be so hard. Like, it's... What is that verse that just came to me, actually, but I don't remember how it goes exactly. Um, Something about the simple things confounding the wise or the foolish things confounding the wise. Sounds like a proverb. Yeah, I think it is. Yes, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Proverbs what? First Corinthians one. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. yeah, it is First Corinthians one. Paul, not Peter. And you know, honestly, that was part of my that was part of my argument for a really long time about the UPC doctrine in general. Was there's a lot of educated people that buy into that, and I am not that smart or educated, and I thought, well. If all of these incredibly smart and educated people believe this, it has to be, because how would they be wrong? Mm. Bad indoctrination? I mean, really? I mean, the, the like the conversation we were having the other day about cults, I think one of the key things is obviously love bombing with most cults, but bad theology and indoctrination and... What was the other one that was really stood out that we said applied? I have a question. Hmm. How many of those well-educated people were converts compared to people who were like generational org people? I don't know. I mean, um, I know of some converts though that were educated. I can think of one. Well, yeah, but I mean, I can think of more than one. But, um, you know, because I feel like theology is underemphasized, call to scripture out of context. Mm-hmm. Most Christians aren't familiar with the dangers and people want to be special. Yeah, that, that was the other one I was thinking of. They want to be special. They want to have the idea that they know the truth or they have some secret knowledge. If... I mean, I, I guess their their version of truth was secret for many, many years. And the gates of hell prevailed up yeah. until the early 1900s. Well, that's also not true. But <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully. I don't know. It just it's on my heart because I know that that's something that can be very convoluted. And it's really not that difficult. And it's very plain in the simple. Bible. Very simple. Um, so we are probably, like I said, going on summer hiatus. We might throw a few episodes out here and there in the summer when we have time. Um, like I said, a lot of stuff is happening with the conference. So I hope everybody is making plans to be there because I would really like to meet you. Um, we also have a new promo that is going on right now for $50 off your ticket. And, 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 and I think it's May 50. I think it's the. Is it all in caps? Yep. Mm-hmm. All May 50, caps. all in May caps. 50. 50 bucks all off. Um, caps. Yeah. So some kind of sneak peek into what's going to be upcoming. We are going to conquer at some point. Is the UPC actually a cult? Mm. Um, I would like to actually get that like kind of more in concrete about not necessarily where we stand about it, but just. You can make your own decision. Um, 
like that Bernard video we were just talking about where he describes legalism and how he doesn't feel like the UPC is legalistic. I really want to go into modesty. Um, I would like to get my friend Kelly on for that. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but um, I would love to have a discussion with her about that whole topic. Um, and, and assurance of salvation, like the once saved, always saved theory. And, you know, the, these are all the topics that we were afraid to touch with a 10 foot pole while we were in, like, you did not believe once saved, always saved. That was just out and out heresy. Trinitarianism, that was out and out heresy. Like if you even question those, you were, you were wrong. Um, but there's nothing wrong with questioning. There's nothing wrong with studying them. Um, there's nothing wrong with talking about it in the open. And these are things that are not salvific. They're not, you know, they, they don't change. They don't change the salvation plan. They don't change the gospel. So, um, they should be talked about. Yeah. It's okay to have different viewpoints and opinions. Right. As long as it's not a salvific issue or changing to the gospel. Yeah. So, so to our Calvinist friends, we love you. (laughs) I had somebody tell me one time about their husband. She's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not a Calvinist, but I'm married to one and we hardly notice. (laughs) I thought that was like the funniest thing. But anyway, I thought it was pretty funny. But we are part of God's elect. So what does that mean? Anyway, we're not, we're not, that's not on the list of things to discuss. Dang it. Dad, I think you and I should have a solo episode where you, we talk about Calvinism. But there's also like different Five levels. tulip, three tulip. Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about that today. Talk so about anyway, that. everybody, I hope you have a really good summer. If we see you for an episode or two here and there, um, we do. If not, it is what it is. We don't get paid to do this. I'm not going to put any extra pressure on us um, just because we do have a lot going on. But this is something that we want to do. It is on our heart and we already bought all the equipment. So we will be back in the fall and um, yeah. Hope you guys have a good summer. Hope to see you at the conference. Yep. Come to the conference. Have a great summer. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy Mai Tai. He has to have the last word. Yes. The last. (laughs) 